Welcome to the third episode of Online Relationship Clinic powered by Keep Marriage Alive Initiative. Did you join us for the first two editions? Did you enjoy them? Did you learn some lessons? We know today's one will be another season of learning to improve our relationship and our marriages. Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your name for today. We thank for what you've set to teach us today. We we'll come with open hearts, willing to learn and glean the truth and apply it in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, that was my husband, Rich, and my name is Angie. We are founders of Keeping Marriage Alive Initiative. Born, Keeping Marriage Alive Initiative was born from a near divorce. And the lessons gleaned from it is what we share around the world to those who want to listen. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is day three. If we were here for day one, we talked about why. And we used the example of transportation. We said the car, when you take a walk, when you drive, when you take a train, when you take an airplane, the common denominator in it is simply this. And we said the common denominator is what? Move, movement. movement. It's a transportation, but the why in it is the movement, to move from one place to another. And we said to you, we define the why of anything, we will make mistakes and we can abuse it. And we agreed that the why of man is to be God-minded, God-minded, yes, to look like God and, and walk in appearance of we are... We are the custodians of the earth, to nurture, to dominate and reflect God likeness. And we now said this yesterday that what? The what is the strategy that keeps the why burning. I mean that when circumstances happen in your life, you react with, you do not react, you respond with the aim. You respond. And we're asking, are you responding? You respond from the, ver the place of, um, what if this reaction I want to take? Of what benefit is it to my why? And that's what we discussed yesterday. Mm -hmm. The what is my reactions? Are they nurturing my why? Or am I destroying the why? A few days ago, I was reading a book. Um, I think two weeks ago, I was reading a book called um, Start With Why by Simon. Le I don't know his name again. It's by Simon something. Yeah? And when I was reading his book, he said he went for a, I guess someone went for a conference. And when they got to the conference, they were for very rich businessmen. And they asked them, um, how many of you are millionaires? They all rose their hands. How many of you accomplished all your goals you've set? They all rose their hands. And I said, how many of you are happy? And very few raised their hands up. And he began to ponder why. If you set goals without putting those goals with the standard of your why, you might achieve those things but lose yourself in it. Lose who you are. We have many people that have wealth we have people that have a marriage that looks like it's working but because they lost the why they have missed the essence of what they are doing so today we are going to talk about how how is simply the physical things the things you are meant to bring to the table physically as partners husband and wife that will activate the what and accomplish the why i repeat myself again the how are the things you need to do together that will activate the what and accomplish the why. So let me explain. Okay, I want movement. If I do not stand up and go to the car and kick it, well, I won't get anywhere. Now, but the how is, how about if we're entering the car, my husband wants to go to Abiokuta and I've made up my mind I'm going to Ibado. You see, there is a problem. We have entered the car. But our how has not, our how was not, the, the how was the car, but we've not defined. So we can say, okay, I really want to go to, he really wants to go to Abiyokuta, I really want to go to Bado. Is there any meeting point? Is there anything we can change so that the what and why is achieved? And that's what we're going to discuss today. Okay, welcome. If you're here, just say hi so we know you're here. And I, I want to begin with um, a story. This story is very interesting. And I think I've shared this case study some years back, but I think it's relevant for today's teaching. It talks about two partners. Two men made a phone call to their wives, and this is their response. And one said, one called the wife and said, Hi, darling. 
I, um, the, I'll be, I need to leave for Tokyo this night. Um, what, um, I hope that's okay. Um, no, let me put it this way. Hi, darling. I need to leave for Tokyo this night for a business opening. The other partner, and the first, when he called his wife, I said, oh, no, no problem. But that's not my business. You never told me about it. And she cuts the phone. The second man, who is his business partner, calls the wife and says, Hi, darling. I'll be leaving for Tokyo this night for a business opening. The wife says, Really? A business opening? Do I meet you with your little luggage for, uh, at the airport? Now, the difference, what caused the different reactions? The same information was passed to two wives by two, the same partners and different reactions. And that's what we are discussing today, the how. What happened was that the first man, when he made the call to the wife, had never told the wife that there was a business opening that was going to come up in Tokyo. The wife had nothing to do about it, knew nothing about the husband. So making the call to the wife was like, is his usual stories. So she reacted from the knowledge she had. But the second woman responded and even went as far as going to the airport simply because she was aware of the plan that was evolving. And this is the how about marriage. Many of us are complained that our spouses do not understand us. Many of us are upset. But in reality, are they part of our journey? Have we agreed on the journey? Are we going to walk the journey together? My husband and I had so many issues, even when we began to understand the why and what, till we began to say, what is, how do we actually actualize this thing? And that was when we stumbled via marriage today, Jimmy Evans and Carrie Evans, on the vision, vision retreat. If you are able to bring both of your visions under one umbrella, half of your problem, short, the remaining half of our problem is solved. There are some things that will come suddenly that you cannot, are not part of the plan. But because you have solved these foundational problems, you, don't, you will not, you, your marriage will not be broken by the storms that come, the natural storms that you cannot plan for. So I want to ask you now, have you ever had a vision retreat, a vision discussion? And when I mean a vision discussion with your spouse, let me explain. My husband and I had our first vision discussion, I think, eight years ago. And we had it in a golden tulip. And the first, when we had that vision discussion, we brought out areas of importance to us. We brought out, my husband is a doctor. I run Keeping Marriage Alive Initiative fully. He works part-time there, but he's a full-time medical doctor. So he brought out his career wishes and desires for the year. I brought out my wishes and desires for Keeping Marriage Alive Initiative. We brought out our wishes for our children. We brought out our wishes, our financial goals as a family and personal individual. Then we brought out our health goals. And we realized that both of us had different goals. One of us had goals in common. But one goal that struck us very strongly was our son, who we wrote with Asterix, our, our second child and our first son. And both of us wrote, troubled about his um, timidity. You see, we have been, we've, our son had grown, but never have we sat down to discuss that our son had a problem. So during that vision retreat, we prayed about it. We discussed on how to, to bring him out of his shell. And prayerfully, we, we did a lot of things roundabout. And three months later, the school called us. And this is what they said to us. Your son, who used to be too to me, is now too outspoken. What changed? As of that time, our son was six years, um, I think, uh, five years old. What changed? Because we were common-minded, or com yes, common-minded on the goal to achieve, to bring him out of timidity, both of us planned our discussions and things for him at the same time and we achieved the positive results in three months it was the first time we understood the power of a vision having a common vision i want to ask you do you know the opposite of a common vision division the die in a vision is two visions in one and in marriage two visions can never apply i don't know if i'm making sense to you this afternoon so i want us to open to just um jacob how many of you have, know the story of jacob and the sheep genesis 30 37 to 39 
Genesis 30, 37 to 39, my husband will be reading. And as he's opening it, I want to say something very uh, important. Laban had already thrown Jacob, believing that he had um, won. He separated the speckled sheep away and the goats and left Jacob with an impossible task. And what did Jacob do? Jacob just put a vision, a common vision, that both the female and male sheep and goat could see. And that was what made the difference. He didn't need to talk to them. He just put something in common. And in doing that, they both delivered the same thing. And that's what our marriage needs. Putting a vision, something both of us can see at the same time, irrespective of our differences, and so that we can achieve a united goal. Okay? Or united front. 30, 17. I said 30, 37 to 39. While my husband is bringing it, I want us to also further think about it. When last did you discuss your hard desires with your spouse, both me, as a man and as a woman? When last did both of you agree on how both of you will support each other's dreams? These conversations must happen if we need our how to be complete and to deliver our vision desire of being united. Okay. So Genesis. But Jacob got fresh branches from poplar. Almond. Sorry, excuse me. Trees. Which version are you reading? Message. Okay, you have to be saying that. Genesis 30, 37, verse 37 from Message Translation. Mm. But Jacob got fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plain trees, and peeled the back, leaving white stripes on them. He stuck the peeled branches in front of the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. When the flocks were in heat, they came to drink and mated in front of these strict branches. Then they gave birth to, to the young that were strict or spotted or speckled. Jacob placed the ewes before the dark colored animals of Laban. That way he got distinctive flocks for himself, which he didn't mix with Laban's flock. And when the studier animals were mating, Jacob placed branches at the troughs in view of the animals, so that they mated in front of the branches. But he wouldn't set up the branches before the feebler animals. That way, feeble animals went to Laban and the study ones to Jacob. Praise the Lord. See, Laban put an impossible task. Can you have you ever seen someone who two black people giving birth to pure white Caucasians with no trace of sod genes in their blood? But Jacob was able to do that by bringing not only the male sheep. And showing him the vision. He brought the male sheep and the female sheep together. And showed them a vision. And they delivered exactly what they saw. Many of us have a vision of a kind of marriage we want. Many men have a vision of what they want. Many women have that. The question is, have both of you brought it together? So that both of you are seeing the same thing. It's imperative as we become, begin to build the kind of marriage that will last and we'll be proud to hand over our, to our children the same kind of pattern mm. that will build a vision. For the first time, if you are just joining us, I was talking about vision as the how. Having a common vision and putting certain things on ground. And I, let me reiterate back. I said, if both of us have one car and I've already entered with the intent I'm going to Ibadan, and my husband enters to go to Abiyokuta, what happens? Division. Divorce is simply two visions running a home. And a home is meant to have a unified front, but different apartments. Meaning that we can decide that we are going to Abiyokuta and Ibadan. But today we'll go to Abiyokuta and sleep over. And tomorrow we go to Ibadan. You know, on our way back, we'll go to Ibadan and return home. But this is an agreement. So the question is, when last did you have a, an agreement of what the goals of the marriage should be? As I, re as I said before, my husband is a medical doctor and runs full-time as a medical doctor and works part-time in Keeping Marriage Alive. I run Keeping Marriage Alive initiative full-time. But both of us marry our visions, our individual financial goals, our family financial goals, the goals we have for our children, and our children as they are growing also know the goals we have set for them, and they have told us the, their own goals, so we marry them. So we have couples who desire 
to run to be one together but have never sat down to map out what life should look in the next 10 years together and who and what should what should we bring to the table which part should i bring if you are just joining in we share the story of a, two partners that made a phone call to their spouse and how their responses were different why were their responses different simple vision the other wife understood the vision why the husband needed to travel urgently the other wife had no clue so sometimes we are saying to ourselves, she doesn't understand. The question is, has it been mapped out? Has it been written? What is our involvement together in it? Another Bible passage that struck me when anytime I think of vision is Mary and Joseph. Please, can you open to Matthew 2, 13 to 14? Many of you know about the story of Joseph and Mary. Remember that Jesus is not the son of Joseph. He's an adopted son. That's how I can put it, as simply as that. But imagine Joseph and Mary agreeing to nurse this child, knowing that their decision will affect this child and affect the community and the nations at large. I want you to begin to look at your vision as husband and wife. Like it does not affect you alone. It affects both your children and the community you belong to. Do you know what they did? My husband, can you read? Matthew 2, 13, message translation. Oh, 13, 13. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under the cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. Praise the Lord. Now I want to say something very important here. Joseph did not say to Mary, this is your child. You need to go to Egypt. Joseph acknowledged that the vision, even though the vision was first laid in Mary's heart, that it could not be accomplished without him playing his role. So they moved from another country to another country to preserve a vision. Most of us run with our vision and say, let the other run. The secret of a successful marriage is to come together and find how we can marry our vision without losing our individuality. Let me repeat myself again. The secret of marriage is how we can come together and marry our vision without losing our individuality. I mustn't lose me for our vision to run. But a part of me has to sacrifice for the vision to become. So Joseph, who is not the father of Jesus, who, if he did not go with them, did not lose anything, knew that his covering was important in delivering the vision given to Mary. So they moved the whole country to accomplish a vision. Now I'm asking every man and every woman listening, what are you willing to sacrifice for the common good of the marriage? I ask again, what are you willing to sacrifice without losing you completely for the common good of the marriage? If you remember where I shared about my son who was very timid, that when he asked me a question, he would pee on himself. But the first time my husband had a vision with me, we had a conversation. And we said, okay, this son is our project for the next three months. And by three months, the school called us and said, your son is coming too outspoken for their liking. What changed? We took the problem as our problem and we played our part and our role till he became now my dream for keeping marriage alive is very massive my husband's dream for his clinic is very massive but we've brought it to the table i'm willing to sacrifice some things for his dream to run he's willing to sacrifice for some things for kma to run he's right here seated patients are waiting but he's sacrificing 30 minutes to make this work because the vision is that kma two of us have to be an example for others on working together now i ask you again is your spouse or your spouse to be aware of what your dreams and desires are? are you, whether you're male or female. How would they contribute in making those desires come to pass? Vice versa. If you do, have not answered these questions, the ability to run this race together is next to none. And I repeat myself, what are you willing to sacrifice to make this work? So there are times... I know that I might not be able to get what I desire and my husband will not be home for nights because of his goal 
to grow the clinic. Will I be a supportive wife? Of course I will. But I'm in the know that this is the goal we need to achieve. But if my husband, I'm not in the know, and he comes every night and tell me I, I was working, what will happen? Discord, quarreling, and others. What do you want to add? Yes, it's important we work together. Even the Bible says, can two work together except they be agreed? It's important. And vision is clear, clearly painting where we intend to end up or where we are going. So the next person knows and cooperates with you and doesn't become a stumbling block out of default. Yes. And it's important to also hear from God on these issues together. You remember Joseph heard from God, moved his son, and he commanded the family, and they moved. So even you, the spouse, when your husband hears from God and tells you what God's command, don't go and be an stumbling block. The same thing with the man, you communicate it to the woman too. Don't just say, okay, we're going to Egypt. Let's run to Egypt. Tell it clearly. Nobody deliberately decides to be an obstacle to the other. I've never seen that happen. Unless they don't know, or you present in a wrong way, and then it will lead to conflicts. And a vision is not, I agree with my husband, and a vision is not agreed suddenly. It's planned before time. So when things crop up, the, what we have agreed, we ask, is it working towards the plan we already had? Do we need to tweak something? You see why Joseph and Mary could do this? Because in agreement, they knew they were crying, carrying a precious child. And they were willing to do whatever needful. So I'm sure that when he told me, Mary said, ah, this is why I'm alive. This is what I'm doing. You're willing to go with us. Let's go together. There was an agreement before even that. And why I'm asking you this, is there are many things you've, ag you, you've agreed in your heart but have not communicated fully. Every wedding anniversary for the past eight years, believe you me, when we are understood that the why we were created was to reflect Christ, Christ-like character, for two of us to become an, an epitome of God on earth. That was the why. We understand that the what is that God's love may be seen in our home through our actions. Then we now say, how do we create this why? How do we make this work? We now build a vision board. Every year in our wedding anniversary, we sit down. And we bring our strong reasons and our desires on the table. And our reasons, it, even if you didn't agree with it, it meant something to me, it meant the other person something too. Yeah. So we do not bring it together. We have books that we write. So my husband has his book. I think our book just finished. We are buying a new book right now. For the eight years we've been doing it. So my husband writes things. And we cover every area of our life. The health, spiritual, communication, sex, money. Am I making sense to you? In-laws, I cover the same thing. I write down what I feel about it. He writes down what he feels about them. He writes down about his own individual desires. I write my own individual desires. We now come look at our children. We begin to pencil them. Okay, this thing you have said will take us far away from our goal. So this year, we are not running with this one. Okay, this one you've brought might bring us closer. This year, we're wrong with this one. We can agree about them, which is very important because it is my vision is your vision. So we come out, on, we build out something that both of us feel that nobody's left behind. Then we put it on the table. When our children were younger, we never bothered to bring it to the table for them. Mm. But for the past three years, we bring it to the table after our vision retreat of three, four nights. We come home and we read that what we've agreed with them, our, I, both of us. And we also show our children what we've discussed about them. Our children now put their inputs where they disagree or they agree. Most of the time they agree. There are some, there are some they will say, mom and dad, this can't work because of this. Then we do not throw away what we've agreed prayerfully. We now inculcate and change some things so that we do not lose them in the journey. So I want to ask you, what are you doing? When last did you have a vision retreat? This vision retreat is done once in a year with the end goal in mind. So when there are reactions in the house, let me give you an example. I was called and said, ah, you need to travel abroad to speak. Obviously, it was a very good opportunity. But I and husband have an agreement that when we are traveling to speak, that if we begin in this new season to go alone, the pattern will be that I will continually go alone. So I said, ah, it, uh, I would like to speak, but is it okay if I come with my husband? The, why the, could I put that in? It, it is in our vision plan that we will travel as, as a couple to speak in other countries. Now, but if we didn't have that together, I will not even need to think about it. I will say yes, but it will deviate from our vision. 
Now, how about if I tell them that and they say no? I will bring that to my husband. And I will say to him, this is what has been told, I've said to me. How do we marry it? Do you still want to come and we we'll pay your own bill? Or do I go alone for this first time and tell them that this is the first time we will do that? But because we had the vision, we can discuss this. Without a common vision, there is no conversation. And what are these three, four things you need to build a healthy vision retreat? Number one, communication. Allow the other speak their mind. That you are ahead does not mean that the other believes and wants to work with you. Both people should be able to speak their mind even if it hurts. The second thing, set a place for forgiveness. The things might be said that you might not like. Forgive the other, but do not throw away what is being said. Remember, it's for the good of the home and for one, every one of us. Is that not so? Yes. Thirdly, be committed to what has been agreed upon. If any change must be made, we must sit back again and have a conversation towards it. I mean, what else do you have to... Uh... Yes, uh, vision retreat is important. And what a good time. Uh, this, we are already together at home. Just make out time and sh share out your hearts with each other. Some of us have things in our hearts we've not shared with our spouse. We are dreaming of it. It's not coming to pass because we've not shared it with our spouse. They can't help us. They can't add to it. This is a unique time. Share it. Let everybody speak from their heart. No holds bar. Speak everything out and discuss it. See how you can assist. See how you can encourage. And both of you are accountability partners. When we agree on this, make sure both of you do that. You are accountable to each other. And keep it going. <clears throat> It's better you it's a good news for you to practice what you've learned now. Don't don't delay it. Something comes to my mind to share. Maybe permit me to share another example. It's, it's chuckling again. And now this is how I'm ending. Um last last two years, we had our vision retreat and we agreed. Uh, okay, last three years to be precise, we had our vision retreat and we agreed that Amazon will be stepping down full time to work on his own, build his own clinic. We've been planning this for two years, so obviously he steps down, and it's still affecting our home. I had conversations with him, and it was causing real rifts in our home. We are running KMA, we are doing a lot of things, but the rifts were showing. And one of the things in our vision retreat map we had is that we will go to church together at least 90% of the time. And because of this new clinic he's building, my husband began to withdraw from going to church, or even praying as a family. So I began to worry. We staggered this for months till the next vision retreat. As much as we tried, we was causing a rift. So the next vision retreat, we had a conversation and I brought it to the table. I said, this cannot go on. But for the first time, because how we do our vision retreat is that we, just, we pray from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Yes. We discuss, we go and play, and then we come back in the evening and discuss on what we want from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. This is how we have been doing it for years. Sometimes we do it the other way, we switch it. But that's how we do it. Pray, have fun, discuss. Pray, have fun, discuss. So we took, I took it back the next year. I said, my husband, you, we feel terribly. You have missed being the, the spiritual head of our home for one year. We don't see you in church. We don't pray. Then he said, but how do I build this clinic and still have this? And something fell after we discussed. I realized that we normally go for 10 o'clock service. And 10 o'clock service, 10.30 service, it ends for 1 o'clock, 12.31. So we're home around 2. And I said, if we switch to early morning service for 7.30 a.m., my husband will be home for 8.39. So nothing is actually lost. And for the first time, we retained our vision, but we changed our mindset. So what we did was shift the timing of going for early morning service and moved it back to, um, from afternoon service, and moved it back to early morning. And that retain, brought back our spirituality as a family. Then he said, ah, prayer time. Normally we pray at 9. We said, okay, we'll shift it to 9, 30, 10. But make sure that you don't give appointments that time. So home, my husband is home 9, 30, 10. And as much as possible, prays with us and still goes back to work. So what I'm asking you is, this vision is not cast in stone. The vision is, yes, this is where we want to arrive. But the techniques to arrive at them could be rediscussed, rediscovered, and re-agreed upon. Yes. Am I making sense to you? Yes. So now some people say we are very busy couples. 
We are, when I mean very busy, but we know that there are key times we must manage for this marriage to continue working as one without losing each other's dream. Uh, is that are you on, all understanding what I'm saying as we round up? Do you have anything to say? Okay, so as we round up, I want you to look at this last story I shared about my husband. The church, our agreement was that we'll go to church 90% of the time. You saw the crisis that came, you saw how we solved it. Now, as you're going to discuss your, have your vision retreat, please have it in this lockdown. Begin to ask yourself, is there things I can tweak without losing our vision? Yeah. Is there things we can tweak without losing each other's individual dreams so that the goal, the common goal will be achieved? I will leave you with this. When you run your race alone, you create two visions in the home. And two visions is simply division. That's die. Die is two. Two visions, division, and ultimately divorce. So if you want a home built strong that will last a lifetime, the how is created on the vision board. The techniques used can be revisited, revisited but the vision is kept. And this vision, this, the value standard is the what and the why. Yeah. So that you do not miss out on why you are building this. I hope we served you well today. This is our last day today. Do send in questions if you still have or will still reply them. Remember that marriage is pleasurable, but the work is done first for the pleasure at the end of it. So enjoy it. That you can, We're proud to tell your children to have your kind of marriage. Fail if you must, but do not stay in your failure. Stand up again and learn again. And my husband has failed several times, and that's why we can share these things with you. So thank you. We love you. We wish you your best in your marriage. Keeping marriage alive. Browse on our websites. Look at our blogs. Participate. From the feedbacks we'll generate, we'll determine if we will continually do this weekly, at least every Friday, to help people learn and prosper in their marriages. Thank you all. Love you. God bless you. Go and make your marriage work. Bye.